To Creative Excellence. I am your host, Dabina Lee, and we are coming to you from the studios of the Government Information Service. This show seeks to give a better understanding of the artist's experience in St. Lucia. We discuss the work, the balance, the successes, and the aspirations. My guests come from various areas of the creative industries, and many wear a variety of hats, like my guest today. She's a singer, songwriter, actress, ambassador, and philanthropist and we will spend the next hour conversing about her experience as a St. Lucian creator. A big welcome to the diva, <laughs> <laughs> Her Excellency Claudia <laughs> Edward Ladner. Welcome Claudia. Thank you for having me. It's okay, a pleasure. we're happy to have you. Thank you. So let me ask you, I asked this first question to all of my guests. Okay. Like I said in the intro, you do many things. Mm -hmm. If somebody says, Claudia, what are you? How would you describe what you are, what are you? I would ask, what am I today? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think foremost, I'm an artist. Okay. I think everything else happened because of the fact that I am an artist. Okay. So foremost, yes, an artist. Okay. So foremost, in terms of being an artist, you're a singer, performer, mm -hmm. it starts, mm -hmm. the foundation I would say is the songwriting. Right. And I've known you as a songwriter. Right. So what is that process like for you? For me, it's sometimes something just comes to my head. I'm at home doing something and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, that's something mm -hmm. just came to me and I just have to sit and stop and write. Right. Sometimes with no music, but my most of my writing I've done when the producer gives me a beat and he says, Claudia, write something to this. So that's how I do most, 90% of my songwriting I do with music. And sometimes I just get inspired and I just stop whatever I'm doing and I, and I write. And sometimes I'm in bed and like, oh my God, something mm -hmm. just popped in my right. head. Even if it's a subject mm -hmm. or something I feel I should write about in song, I, I note it and then I write. Okay, but as an artist, you don't just use your material. You've worked with other songwriters, mm -hmm. you've worked with other producers. So what is that process like? Um, is it that you work together with them on a song or they just give it to you wholesale or um, how does it usually happen? It happens different ways. Like um, most of my recordings, my last bit of recordings, my last mm -hmm. two albums I've done with um, Ross, roll out right. seat. So what we usually do is he comes up with certain beats and then mm -hmm. we sit in studio and we just sit there and write. Like we'd take a few sessions, all we do is write. Mm -hmm. And he'd say, okay, that doesn't sound good. And I'd say, mm, I don't like that. And we right. change lyrics, but we do it you together. You write to the music. Right, and we do it together. Um, some musicians say, Claudia, I have a song I'd like you to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like you to sing. And okay. they would have all the lyrics done in the case of um, Christopher Hunt with okay. On The Edge. Okay, so I had a chance to work with you on that, um, yes. On The Edge. So it was produced by Libo, right? Yes. Francis Libo Dilemma, one of our most loved, I mean, producers, most yes. kind-hearted, yep. generous um, yep. people, I think, in the, that we had in the creative in the industries. Um, but this song, On The Edge, he produced it. Yes. And you said Christopher wrote the song. Yes, Christopher Hunt. He figured, right. he heard um, Broken Wings, which mm -hmm. you also worked with me on with yes. the video. And he figured that I could do rock. And he said, I have this song I need you to listen to. Okay. And when I heard the song, when I read the lyrics and I heard the mm -hmm. music, I was in love with the song. Okay. This song is actually, and my album is called On The Edge. Okay. That's how much I love the song and I think the song is, speaks to everything else on the album and the song spoke to me. The lyrics were like, okay. I felt it. And, and when so I sing it- there's nothing you changed on it? Not a thing. I didn't okay. change anything about it. I loved it a hundred percent. That's nice. Well. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you, Christopher. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a listen. Let's take a tour. What, two minutes of uh -huh. On The Edge, the video. I had a chance and opportunity to work with yes, you. Yes, yes. a great experience. Oh, yeah. The location oh, for me was Kai amazing. Oh, and it was just, for me, it was 
work, but it didn't feel like work because we were in this set. We overnighted, was... right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, yeah. Let's yeah. show you where we got a chance to work um, for On the Edge by Claudia Edward Ladner. Let's see it. on the edge right? yeah love it love it oh, my favorite song yeah <laughs> yes. I love it it's the emotion that mm -hmm. just it's beautiful right so when you started in the industry like many people mm -hmm. you had a nine-to-five yes so what was that like to challenging. have a nine-to-five right it's challenging especially in my case um I was getting offers overseas Mm -hmm. And I had to balance and think, mm -hmm. oh my God, if I take this, that means I'm going to take from my vacation time and um, I can't ask for more days off, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of, it's, so it was challenging um, to a point where I knew that a decision had to mm -hmm. be made to choose one. Yeah, so before we get there, what was that, so what method did you use to balance? What was your method for balance? <sighs> For because me, the time was demanding. It was for demanding for me mm -hmm. because I worked with um hot in the hotel industry and okay. um I was a manager, so it was hard for me to ask for time to take music as my my w that I'm passionate about and make mm -hmm. it the main thing in my life. So mm -hmm. it was the little time that I got, the little days off, the little um, weekend if I had the weekend. So it was really, really tough. I didn't um, produce a lot of music during that time either because I just could not devote the time to go to the studio or to um, sit and do songwriting. So did you feel like the art was taking a, a back seat? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. To a point where I thought, you know what, let's just, maybe I should just forget the music. Mm. and just work and make my money and then and pay my bills and you know mm. that kind of stuff yeah so okay because there are a lot of people in that same kind of situation you're about nine to five you have this passion and you don't know how you're going to balance it right but also how do you continue to where you are function as an artist and balance how, exactly. how, how do you do it well the because thing is some artists here they mm -hmm. they perform at nights right at the hotels so if they have a day job they just go home and mm -hmm. chill and change and go to work at nights it's demanding still but it's it's feasible you can do it right. if you're a hotel artist but then you have to find the time now for rehearsals with the mm -hmm. band so um, it's tough but it's not impossible but mm -hmm. it's tough so how then how did you take the leap? Because right now you're not working a nine to five. No. 
So what was that leap like? How, how was that decision made that you're going to go 100% for the artist? It was tough because I worked at a hotel at the time and mm -hmm. even the hotel called me up and said, you know, there's mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. You're a great employee, but your passion and your work are not able to balance. So you need mm -hmm. to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And I made the choice and I mm -hmm. said, music it is. And I spoke to my partner at the time and he said, do it. Take the leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work out, you go back to you have your degree, you, you right. go back and you find a job. And I took the leap of faith and I found myself doing other things that occupied my time and that brought in some income and okay, that's I'm still great. here today. Well, I guess it's very important if you're in an industry like that to have a supportive partner. Oh yes, Because oh, yes. can you imagine going to somebody's not understanding and saying, oh, I want to quit my job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, oh really, now who's going to take care of you? Right. No, but he was, my, my husband's very supportive. Um, uh, my mom's very supportive and mm -hmm. it helps and that you have a group of supportive people mm -hmm. so with you. You. Right. you know, there are certain friends that I have who are very supportive and mm -hmm. they love what I do and they're encouraging and mm -hmm. sometimes they see opportunities and say, Claudia, hey, I see they're right. looking for an artist over there. You know, you've done that. Hey, Claudia, oh. go fly online. <laughs> I remember, um, I think that was when there was the Olympics in the oh, UK. Right. I mean, you sent London. me a link right. and you said, Claudia, they're looking for artists, apply. <laughs> and I applied. <laughs> you know, so it's good to have people like right, that right. in your circle, mm -hmm. people who want to help you move mm -hmm. forward and not just, you know, see you doing things and say nothing or don't lend a helping hand. So okay. it's important in the industry. Yeah, that, I think that's very important yeah. um, for all artists to have that. Yeah. Because most people will not see the art as something important because right. most times, especially here, it's not something where you get a lot of income from. Right. So they'll be like, you're going to leave a good, stable job to go into something that, that is not as stable. Right. And there are people who say, mm -hmm. I mean, back then, there, oh, I even yes. had family members mm -hmm. who said to me, when are you going to get a real job? Oh, my like, goodness. Like, hello. Hello. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is, is my a real job. job. <laughs> it just hap so happens that I'm enjoying it. Right. You know, that doesn't mean it's not real because I'm enjoying it. I'm having exactly. fun in the process, but hey, I'm getting paid. Yeah, that's great. So. so you're not just a singer. Mm -hmm. You also called it the actor. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the actor. Yes. Like, I know you've done stage. Mm -hmm. You've done movies as well. Yes. You will in your music videos. You want to look at a music video where you had some acting. You know, with Vel and the girls. Oh in yeah, the that was ah, that was crazy. <laughs> That's broken wings. Yes. Yeah, we'll look, have a look at that in a while. Uh huh. But tell us, because I know you acted in like it was a Lifetime film. Yeah. And stage. So tell us a little bit about that. How you got into acting? Okay. So. I was minding my business. I went to CDF, minding my business. I think I went to collect something at CDF. Right. And Dahlia, is that her name, Dahlia? Yeah, Dahlia, Dahlia Francois. Francois was there yes. with Derek Walcott. Right. And she came up to me and she says, Derek wants to talk to you. I said, mm -hmm. mm, okay. Those of you who don't know who Derek, well, everybody knows Derek Walcott is, yeah. right? Okay. <laughs> I, hope, I hope so. And, um, <laughs> And before she could finish, Derek said, hey, you, come here. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he doesn't know who he's talking to, you know? <laughs> so I didn't move. Mm -hmm. And Dahlia said, Claudia, please go. It may be the opportunity of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So I went to him, and he says, we're casting for a show, for a play, mm -hmm. um, The Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be Helen of Troy. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? This man doesn't even know me. You don't know right. if I can act. You don't know anything about me. But apparently he had asked da Dahlia who I was, and she said, she's a singer. Right. So he said, let's go to Peach and Point now. I mean, I have my day planned, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I looked at Dahlia, she said, let's go. Right. So she was the Thank convinced. Thank you, Dahlia. I know. Oh. She was like the convincing part of this all. And then I right. said, okay. So I put everything down and I went to Pigeon Island. But wait, he asked you to be Helen? Yes. As in the star of the show? Yes. <laughs> okay. Exactly. <laughs> okay. The star of the show. So I, I go there. Star of the show with Derek Walker directed. And I said Please. to Dahlia, how can he ask me to be Helen of Troy? Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you rehearse and you already have a Helen of Troy. Right. And she said, yeah, 
And I said, oh my God, I'm not getting into this kind of thing, you know, right, like right, the right. Helen of Troy, then you bring this new girl to play Helen of Troy. I mean, I was like right. livid. So I go there and he says, put this on her. <laughs> so I go, they dress me up in this white thing and mm -hmm. I'm looking at the play, there's a Helen of Troy. Oh dear. And um, he says, give her a script. And you do Helen of Troy. And everybody's like, what the hell is going on here, you know? Right. <laughs> and I ended up doing the reading, and he says, I heard you sing, so sing a song. Mm. You know, he's that guy, you know? Right. And I'm like, oh my God, on the spot like that? And then right. I sang a song, and he says, okay, this is our new Helen of Troy. Oh my goodness, okay. So, right. yeah, so that's how it all started. Okay. And we did the play here, and then he called me, and he says, I'm coming to your house now. Okay. Then, <laughs> okay. Then he comes home and he says, so we're doing a tour of Europe. Would you like to come as Helen of Troy? Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> you, you know, know just like that. First of all, let's, let's think about this. Derek Walker just sees you and he says, you're my Helen of Troy. Yeah. Then he says, <laughs> we're going to Europe. Like, okay, this doesn't happen every I know. day. <laughs> so we go to Spain, we go to Sicily, we go to, you know, it was like a whole wow. tour of Europe. It was amazing. And I said, yeah, I'm coming. Okay, so were you working on 95 at that time? At that time, no, because I had quit um, working at the Wave Radio because I was getting ready to go back to school. Okay. So it was just that break between the Wave and school that okay. I was still here. Okay. And it, it was okay. lucky for me because I got the opportunity to do that. And then after when right. I came back, it was like a month and then I went off to school. Okay, so it sounds like divine intervention. It was, it was. And I did Helen of Troy and it was amazing and I loved it and I was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how doing that helped me as a performer okay. doing my music. In what way, how would you say? Because you're on stage and you become this other person. Okay. And I think that's what I learned. Mm. I learned that being on stage, it's not about you, this pretty girl, it's about you enjoying what you're doing but mm -hmm. no and feeling exactly what you're doing because you're singing a song and there's no emotion right so like beyonce and sasha fierce right right mm -hmm. so you become that other person you become the person who's telling a story through a song right you know so it becomes then you become a performer right you know so there's a there's an artist there's mm -hmm. a singer but there's a performer and that's what helped me become a performer either through play or through music i am a performer on stage mm. so yeah there are singers i never knew that story of how you got to act with derek so that's yes, very interesting that's the, story. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story okay so then apart okay so then you move from stage mm -hmm. to screen right how did that happen how did that happen how did that happen? <laughs> it just happened. It just ha I got a call and right. um, first there was this um, honeymoon in paradise. Okay. They were filming in St. Lucia. And okay. I heard about it on the wave radio. Okay. And the day I heard about it was the last day for St. Lucians to go to Coconut Bay to oh. try out. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I said to my husband, mm, you heard about that? He said, yeah, I just heard that. I was going to call you. I said, well, today's the last day, so forget that. Right. So then he says, you should go. I said, I'm not driving all the way to view for mm. <laughs> But I did. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, they said, oh, great. You gone. They, they liked what I did. And then I ended up getting a part in the movie. Oh, nice. And then Demetrius, who is a St. Lucian, Right. Okay. Uh, but lives in, in New, New York. York. Right. Mm -hmm. He was doing um, two other plays, two other movies. Right. One was a Caribbean film called Fire and Monstrat. Oh, right. I remember when they were filming, they right. were doing some shooting down. Right. That. So I mm. did that with them, and then he had this series called The Red Bench, which okay. I also did with him. Okay, nice. Yeah. But then you also got a chance to put your acting to work mm -hmm. in your own um, business in your music video broken wings yes had the opportunity yes. to direct and this was a very this was a lot of fun to do <laughs> yes, so let's it look was. at broken wings about two minutes of broken wings where claudia is acting <laughs> <laughs> alongside <laughs> bell y'all know bell yeah. from the gym <laughs> bell was the bad girl I but know. <laughs> you guys will see it <laughs> so here is broken wings
<laughs> so that was Broken Wing. Yeah. And so the fight scenes and so on, you know. That was so right. much fun. Yeah, it was. So we're just switching gears a little. Mm -hmm. So you had an opportunity to perform on the jazz circuit mm -hmm. in Asia. Yes. You perform a lot in Southeast Asia. Yes. Um, Thailand. South Korea, which yeah. I want to go to. Yes, and it's so beautiful. On. Yeah. Also, we spoke about the Lifetime movie. So how opportunities like that come up, like the Asian jazz door? How would something like that come up? Well, the truth, you have to make those. Th some people are lucky to just get somebody to say, hey, hey, I'll put you onto a show. But mm -hmm. for me, I go looking. So I actually went online and I said, I want to go to Asia. Mm. And I said, let me go online. Let me see who, what agents I can find. And I found an agent. Right. And um, I put in my resume and all okay. of that. And then in about a week, I got an email from Ooh, wow. them. And he says, I have an opportunity in Thailand. Do you want it? I was like, OK. Now it, the reality is hitting. I mean, I did it not really expecting much. Right. And he gave me the dates and the salary and all of that. And it mm -hmm. looked so good. Right. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got to go. But then I'm going alone to somewhere as far as Thailand. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody or anything. I don't know if this guy is legit. Right. So I said, okay, you know what? He's t he told me everything about where the performances would be. Mm -hmm. So I actually wrote to those places okay. to make sure that really did exist. Because mm -hmm. I ain't going there. And, right, uh, exactly. Mama raised no safe. fool, you know? Right, right. <laughs> so I wrote and they said yes. Yes, um, we have your name down as a performer, blah, blah, blah. Nice. So, yeah, I took the leap of faith. I went on the long flight. And um, I remembered, I said, I have a friend from school in France mm. who is from Thailand. Oh, nice. So I wrote to him, and he says, yeah, I, I don't live far from where those oh, venues nice. are. And then we met up, so I had at least a friend okay, there. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, that's how that came about. And oh. um, after my first stint there, they called me once every year. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. So it's really about being a go-getter. It's yes, like not yes. sitting back. Because I think also St. Lucian performers, artists, they might not think of these, I don't want to say non-traditional, but when you think of performance, you might think of the US or the UK. Right, you might right. not think of Southeast That's Asia. That's right. Right? That's right. So and they love music so bad down there. It's like, if you sing, you're like a god, you know? Mm -hmm. They love music and, and when you come as an exotic <coughs> right, young lady, right. <laughs> <laughs> they love it even more. So they treat okay. you like you're royalty. It's amazing mm, nice. how they treat musicians. That's great. So let me tell you, so say Lucians that want an opportunity like that, what mm. advice would you give to them? Don't just, just sit around and wait for things to come to you. You have to take the leap of faith. You have to go on. Everything's mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. And the, the young people know that more than me. I'm, I'm not a young person anymore. But, eh. <laughs> <laughs> young as, as young as you feel, right? Right. But um, they know that. Mm -hmm. They know how to do everything online. So come on, get online and mm -hmm. look for opportunities. They exist. Yeah. You know, it's just you. And But now, too, the demand is so great and the volume of musicians out there has it's grown cool. so much that um, you may not get the opportunity that you want, but you keep trying, something mm -hmm. will come up. Right. So talking about that and export, so we have a local export agency, yeah. Export St. Lucia. Export St. Lucia. Um, we also had, OECS had a unit that dealt with helping um, Caribbean talent to, you know, yeah. get them out there. Right. CARICOM has the same thing. I mean, we've been on some of those those um, missions, those right. interventions. Right. Do you think they're hitting the mark? Do you think it's, or if you have to give advice to these export <coughs> agencies, like our export agency, what kind of advice would you give to them in terms of the type of interventions that they should, you know, should have? Right, that's a very good question because um, I've been on some of those, um, I've had the opportunity to work with some of those um, export agencies and the initiative is great, mm -hmm. but I, I think it, there should be longevity. Mm -hmm. So we're invited to perform in the UK. Mm -hmm. Why don't we take that opportunity to maybe not once every year, but once every other year, mm -hmm. get another spot, bring other artists in, um, right. get, to have some kind of reciprocation with them. Um, next year, we have jazz. 
have mm -hmm. them help you get some artists down here, you know, and mm -hmm. just made, make an, a trade, an exchange. I think more can be done. Mm -hmm. It's not when we get the opportunity, but they have to make more opportunities right. for young people, even within those same venues. Right. What I find that is the positive thing about those interventions is the networking part of it. Right. Because some of those people I have met on some of those trips or study tours, right. like I might not have gotten a whole lot out of that actual activity right but the long in the long term i find myself working with so many people that's I've met right on those on on those tours right and the thing right. is for the artist like you said to mm -hmm. make those mm -hmm. relationships you right. know you have to make yeah. those relationships so if export st lucia doesn't call you for another mm -hmm. gig right. in the uk but because you form those relationships exactly. you could find someone and say hey what are you guys what doing? are you guys do right and what i found was that we were so close to Martinique and Guadeloupe. Yes. But um, I met the, the, the people from Martinique and Guadeloupe in Europe. Right. And they're so close. And they're so close. So close, right? Um, so I think maybe OECS now, because they're part of OECS, are trying to have more collaborations. Right. And, and so that would on. make perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. Right. So let's just switch gears a little. <laughs> <laughs> You're also an ambassador. So you really. Her Excellency. Yes, I am. Claudia Edward Ladner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a goodwill ambassador for yes. St. Lucia. What does that entail? Um, it means that I have to continue doing what I do, which is um, Edward for Education. Okay, so tell us about Edward for Education. Right, Edward for Education is a charity foundation that works with schools to help make teachers teach in a better environment and help kids learn in a better environment. So what we do is we go to different schools and we see what their problems are. Well, most schools just write to us mm -hmm. and they say, this is the project we want to undertake. And then we take, we go see the project and we take projects that are most feasible to us. That makes mm -hmm. sense that we look at what we have, we look at what we can get, and sometimes some projects are just too much and we mm -hmm. don't take them on, but some projects we can assist, like we've um, built a sick room for the um, Corinth? Corinth Secondary mm -hmm. School, we've built a theater arts room for the C.C. Ross Secondary School, we've mm -hmm. built a learning center for the Ave Maria, Ave Maria Primary School. We also brought in a Shakespeare professional mm -hmm. to do workshops nice. with the teachers in the north and the south of the island. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it continues. I mean, we just want to make sure the environment for kids is mm -hmm. one that they are comfortable sitting and learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, and talking about that, because um, your foundation supports theater, I would yeah. say theater arts. Yeah. What do you think? What's your, your, your impression of the current state of arts education? What do you think of? Do you think that more should be done? What, what's, what's your feeling on arts and theater in school? I think it's very important. As a lot of kids, they learn to express themselves through, mm -hmm. through theater and through art. So like the Cicero Secondary School, we build the theater arts room for, the teachers are passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And when you have teachers who are passionate about things like that, then it trickles down to the students. And the students, when you see them perform, it's amazing mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. They just love it. And they, I said, in everything that you guys want, it's a theater arts room that you want. They said, yes. Mm, nice. Because the kids want to do theater. And I think it's important that it's a part of the curriculum. And mm -hmm. I think kids, um, the arts is so broad now, mm -hmm. you know. So I think it's an avenue for most kids who don't want to become doctors or who don't want to become yeah. lawyers or who don't want to be a businessman. Right. They can go get into the arts. So it's very important. Right. And talking about education, something that's very important, I think, in education is mentorship and mm -hmm. apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. When you were coming up, did you have a mentor, somebody you saw as somebody you would look up to? or somebody would have a chance to talk to you, right. show you the ropes, was well, there anybody like that? Well, kind of, because I worked at Federal Express, mm -hmm. and then right next door, there was a record shop. Mm. I don't remember where that record, what's the name of that record shop, that was downtown, mm -hmm. on the same street as the library. Okay. Okay, so FedEx was there in that mm -hmm. corner, and then there was a record shop. Right. And I went in there one day and I saw a CD with Derrida Williams right. and the guy was playing the music. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. she even has a CD, Jesus right. Christ, you know, that, right, right, that was right. back then. And I was very <laughs> impressed with that and I listened to her music mm -hmm. and I got the album 
Right. And I said, wow, she is powerful. Yes, And she is. I think from listening to Derrida, that's when I decided, you know what, I should do more. I'm right. just playing around now, you right. know, like, right. let's do something. Right. And um, I got more serious about the music. I think she was, and even now, I mean, mm -hmm. I see Derrida perform and I'm always yeah. in awe because she's such a powerful performer. Right. You know, she you has that our original charisma. Diva, you know? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, diva. exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it would be Derrida Williams. Okay, nice. So, what advice would you have for somebody coming in? Somebody coming into to this creative field, what kind of advice would you have for them? Be your it unique be self. Advice. I think um, we live right now in a world where musicians feel great when they say, oh, you sound like Beyonce, or you mm, sound like right. Rihanna, you know? Right. If you hear, me, if you hear a voice somewhere, mm -hmm. And it's me singing. You will know it's me, Devina. Right. You know, so I think if you have Shane mm -hmm. Ross somewhere, you'll know it's Shane right. Ross. Most if people tell me it sounds like John Legend. Sometimes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. <laughs> that's very uh, true. Yeah, so that's it used to confuse me, to be honest. Yeah, you didn't you're do it on right. purpose, though. You you're didn't right. do it on purpose. Exactly, because right. one time, mm -hmm. um, my husband came home and he said, Oh, so John Legend has a new song and he's singing the song. I said, okay, that's Shane Ross. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. But yeah. um, be your unique self. Mm -hmm. Give out something, even if you may sound like someone else, mm -hmm. but make there be a key thing that when right. somebody hears it, they know, they know it's, it's, you. it's you. It's you. And be you. Right. And I think that's the one thing I'll tell the young musicians coming up. Don't be afraid to explore. Mm -hmm. And... Um, like I know some young musicians, they great voices, but they're afraid to take the next step into right. sh showing the true color of their voice. Mm -hmm. And I learned that through working with Rossi. Okay. You know, I thought, okay, I can only sing songs down here. Right. And he says, you can do more than that. Sing this song right. at that key. And right. then I found, I was like, oh my God, I did that, you know? Nice, so nice. don't be afraid to open up mm -hmm. and, and find the true color within you, your true voice, you know? Try to experiment with instruments as well. And that's the one thing I regret as a musician, mm -hmm. that I did not pick up an instrument and learn to play an instrument. Right. So it's hey, important. It's, not too late, it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying something so I might surprise you okay nice but yeah it's mm -hmm. important learn to play the guitar the keyboard something mm -hmm. and the violin the flute you right. know so yeah so tell us what's on the horizon for Claudia <sighs> there was so many things on the horizon before COVID, COVID. Um, so now it's just refocusing and re mm -hmm. because I I I think during COVID, I lacked motivation to do anything. Right. You know, I lost my zeal and mm -hmm. my... Mm -hmm. But um, the whole thing was for us to do another, um, another musical, mm, right. a woman's songbook. Oh, that was really good. Yeah, that was amazing. And I, that was one project that I did that I felt like, oh my God, I don't think I can do this. Because mm -hmm. it's not just the performing, it's, it's, it's an experience expensive mm. undertaking so you know we got into it and it's like oh my god these tickets better sell right you know <laughs> but it did sold. very yeah, well it was a really good show very good so we were looking to do part two of it or a mm -hmm. second one and everything messed up so we're trying to figure out you know how to go around it now and get that back on the road so right. that's one of the things that i definitely want to do with before next year ends. Okay, yeah. great. So, I think, well, I'm not sure what we haven't touched on. I think like we've touched on like, like Oh, you everything. were talking, we were, you had asked me about the ambassador role and I went oh, into yes. Edward for education. So tell me about that. Yes, so after, because um, the government had seen that all the work that we did as Edward mm -hmm. for education, they were like, why didn't you tell us? I'm like, yeah. right. <laughs> I do it because, you know, and, yeah. and it's a feeling that I get after it's done. The kids are mm -hmm. happy. The teachers are so thankful, you know, and right. they gave me that role because of what I had been doing for Edward for education. Right. So now being a Goodwill Ambassador, since I've gotten that title, I've done a mural for the... There is so school oh, right. with what's his name? 
Naja. Naja, yes. Right, right. It, of the solar system. It's oh, so yes, beautiful. Oh, yes, I've seen those yes. photos. Beautiful. Guys, take a look at the photos. Yes. We'll put them up on screen. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, we did that project um, earlier this year, and it was beautiful. The teachers are elated, and we had sponsors like Harris Paints come on board. And, of course, Saki Productions was a big sponsor. He just right. came in, and he did it, you know? Yeah. And his heart is, like... Yeah. Lovely. It's great when artists can collaborate like that yes, for a good cause. Definitely. So yes. that's the project I've done since then. Um, we're, we're looking at a lot of projects, but because we were not sure what schools would be like with all mm. the at-home schooling, right. we kind of um, were holding back until things got better. Okay, well, we're decide. looking forward to see what else is yes. going to be coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe this is a good place to wrap up. Guys, maybe it's a good place to wrap up. <laughs> um, but I want to leave you guys with one of my favorite videos that I did for Claudia. Oh, really? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Which showing one is all that? the videos <laughs> that I did for Claudia. You did a lot of them. <laughs> so one of them is Make You Mine. Ah, that, we, we, isn't we, it one of your favorites? Yes, but I love the location. Yes. It was a beautiful location. It was. And um, I will let the audience decide why it's one of my favorite videos. <laughs> so uh, I, make, got, <laughs> I got you. So it's Make You Mine by Claudia. So thank you so much, Claudia. Thank very you for having me. Lovely sit down. Yes, yes. So, yes, guys. So this has been Creative Excellence. So enjoy the video. Uh-huh. <laughs> gonna make you mine. I'm gonna make you mine. I'm gonna make you mine. Baby boy, it's me and you tonight. Everything's gonna be so fine. Just I know my babe in the afterglow. Gonna make you the star of a show. Are you ready to go? It's a feeling that I give and I dance to me. It's chills running down my spine, baby. That's why I wanna make you mine. Why I wanna make you mine. Seems so damn easy. Feels like it comes so naturally, baby. Cause you're the one for me. Tease me, tease me. Please me, please me. Don't you leave me. Hide and dry. Tease me, tease me. Please me, please me. Don't you leave me. It's the feeling that I give when you next to me. It's the chills running down my spine, baby. That's why I want to make you mine. Why I want to make you mine. It's the ooh that comes over me. It's the way you make me smile, baby. Why I want to make you mine. Why I want to make you mine. Oh, boy, this feeling is incredible. I love so undeniable. You're just one of a kind I wanna make you mine, mine, mine